You probably didn't hear about it. There was no flashy event, no tech influencer parade. But Google just released something different. It's called Opal. And it doesn't just rewrite how we think about coding. It unravels the entire idea of coding altogether. This isn't a toy, and it's not a pitch deck fantasy. Opal builds real, working apps, and it does it without asking you to write a single line of code. That alone would be impressive, but that's just the start. Vibe coding, what it feels like, not what it is. Opal doesn't want you thinking in variables or brackets. It wants you to think in vibes. You open it, you type what you want. A budgeting tool, a daily planner, a habit tracker with streak counters. And then, well, Opal makes it happen. A working prototype appears, visually mapped out. You're not dropped into an IDE or dumped into menus. You see the whole logic of your app, step by step. Every detail, like input, output, and blocks of logic, is charted in a flow. You can click on a step, edit it, and refine it. If you need something new, all you have to do is drag and drop it in. It's like brainstorming in a sandbox that actually listens. Apps in minutes, not months. Once you're happy with your creation, just hit publish. The app goes live instantly. You get a link, you share it, and you're done without any back-end nightmares. Just creation, straight from your browser. And here's where it gets a little wild. Opal comes with a public gallery. That means you can browse apps other users have made, remix them, tweak them, and push your own versions out into the world. You're not just building anymore, you're collaborating. You can take a quiz generator someone else built and make it your own, or customize a planner, maybe tweak a calculator to fit your needs. Remixing is built right into the interface, no complicated steps, just click and create. Forget code, speak instead. Other platforms like Canva and Figma started down this road, allowing people to build by feel rather than code. But Opal, it goes further. It turns natural language into the interface itself. You describe what the app should do, and it figures out how. You don't have to know what a conditional statement is. You just say, if the answer is correct, show a message and add a point and Opal brings it to life. Logic becomes visual. Errors become obvious. The process becomes alive. It's not about debugging anymore. It's about watching your app think and tweaking it like a sculptor, not a software engineer. Still early, still serious. Now, let's pump the brakes a bit. Opal is in public beta, only in the US for now, and no, it's not ready for heavy-duty back-end logic or real-time data crunching. You're not building the next Airbnb on it. But that's not the point. This is rapid prototyping made simple. It's casual product design, where quick ideas become real, shareable tools. Educators, artists, small business owners, even hobbyists, people who've never written a line of code are suddenly building apps like it's second nature. That's who Opal is for. So, what can it actually build? So far, testers have used it to make static front-end apps. Checklists, planners, portfolios, calculators. Nothing fancy, right? But for most use cases, that's more than enough. And the interface makes logic building intuitive. Opal wires up the entire workflow based on your description. No JavaScript. No syntax. You see every node of logic. You can fix errors by looking at where things go wrong like following a circuit map. It feels like watching an app's mind work and getting to poke around inside. The bigger picture, a tool among titans. If you zoom out for a second, you'll realize this isn't happening in a vacuum. Microsoft is out there pushing GitHub Copilot like it's the future of development. OpenAI's advanced data analysis tool is making real-time code look like magic. Other platforms like Cursor and Lovable are pushing toward the same vibe coding dream. And here comes Google, Opal in one hand, Ambition in the other. But here's the twist. Opal isn't for developers. It's not trying to replace your IDE. It's a doorway, a way in for the 99% who have ideas, but no idea how to build. That's the bet. The no-code market is booming. Here's why. 
here's a number that puts things in perspective. The no-code and low-code market is growing by more than 20% every year. And it's not developers fueling that growth. It's people who never plan to code at all. They just want to build. Tools like Webflow, Glide, and Bubble have already shown their serious demand. But Opal pushes it further. Because it's not just visual, it's generative. You describe, it delivers. Of course, there are limitations, what you can't do. Yet, right now, you can't link a database. No API integrations. No user sign-ins beyond a Google account. So if your goal is to build a full-scale app with live data, user accounts, and complex logic, Opal's not quite there. But let's be real. Most people aren't launching the next Netflix. They're making planners, forms, lightweight tools to share with a group or test an idea. And for that, Opal's already way ahead. But who owns what you make? Now here's the part no one's talking about, but everyone should be. Apps made with Opal live on Google's servers. They're powered by Google's models. Which brings up a big question. If you're building a prototype for a startup or a client, who actually owns it? That's where things get murky. Right now, Opal is best used for low-stakes experimentation. If privacy, security, or intellectual property is critical, you'll want to proceed with caution. Still, for early-stage ideas and creative exploration, it's one of the smoothest, most accessible tools out there. Google's other secret weapon, math and memory. Opal is impressive on its own. But what if I told you that while one team at Google was reshaping app development, another was quietly outperforming humans at elite math competitions? At this year's International Mathematical Olympiad, the gold standard for the world's top math students, Google DeepMind's Gemini didn't just show up, it won. Gemini goes deep, five out of six, perfect. Here's how it unfolded. Last year, DeepMind's Alpha Proof and Alpha Geometry tackled the IMO. They scored 28 out of 42, a strong silver, but they needed help. Translating complex problems into formal logic, processing results over several days. This year was different. Gemini showed up with an upgraded brain and no crutches. It scored 35 out of 42, solved five out of six problems flawlessly, and it did it all within the four and a half hour competition window. That's a gold medal score. The best part? The judges said its solutions weren't just correct, they were clear. That changes everything. Deep think mode, a mind with many paths. So what gave Gemini its edge? It all comes down to something called deep think mode, a new reasoning framework that changes everything. Rather than walking a single path to the answer, Gemini opens several at once. It runs multiple lines of logic in parallel, test them, weigh them, then fuses the best ideas into a final solution. But it's not just about strategy. Gemini was trained on an enormous data set of expert level math proofs then fine-tuned with reinforcement learning focused purely on solving theorems. It resulted in a model that doesn't just compute, it understands. It takes natural language in and outputs complete, fully formed proofs. Just like that. History in seconds. An AI for the ancient world. Still not amazed? Google's not just cracking equations, it's also decoding the past, literally. Anias is an AI designed to read ancient Roman inscriptions carved in stone. Traditionally, historians would spend months trying to piece together what those texts once said. Fragment by fragment, but Anias does it in seconds. Anias. Filling the gaps of time. Trained on over 176,000 Latin inscriptions from major academic databases, Anias doesn't just glance at text, it reads deeply. It's multimodal, which means it analyzes the wording, the structure, the syntax, and the actual image of the stone itself. Anias doesn't just translate, it rebuilds. Even with partial damage, it restores with 73% accuracy. That's not just useful, that's revolutionary. One of its biggest tests was Emperor Augustus's res gestae, famously complex and debated inscriptions in Roman history. 
Anias gave a probabilistic date range that lined up perfectly with the best academic theories. It matched what leading scholars had debated for years in seconds. Sketch the future. Decode the past. So, where does this all lead? Opal is sketching software ideas at lightning speed. Gemini is winning math golds. Anias is reading forgotten languages etched in stone. These aren't just tools, they're signals. AI is no longer just about chatbots and funny art. It's a building, reasoning, restoring. If this is what's flying under the radar, imagine what's still coming.